Hello, it's been a while. I know a lot of things have happened. It has been a long time since I done a video. Let's just jump into it. I don't know what else to say. I do remember that the last time we were just waking up and we're going to school. The thing is that I know that if I had stayed back home and snooze the phone, the alarm, I would have met Jodaro on the way to school because we were going to be late. I know that, but I don't know what's <laughs> gonna happen now. Okay, here we go. To school. Like I thought, the campus is like a ghost town, not another soul in sight. I wonder if Jonathan is even here yet. He probably is. I look at my watch, school doesn't start for another hour. Oh well, if he's not here, I'll just take a nap and my best to pass the time. Fair. He's probably here though. I'm not sure who yawns harder when I open the door. Me or Mr. Jonathan, he walks up from his desk making some paper scatter. My man! It's been so long, how have you been? Oh, Dana, good morning. Did I scare you? My bad. Jonathan scrambles to pick up the papers. He sets them on his desk in an untidy pile. He looks a little sheepish. I'm not used to students coming in so early. Actually, you're the first student that's come in early since I've started teaching here. Good to know! Is that a good impression? Delinquence and tardiness go hand in hand, after all. I'm sorry if I was interrupting. Oh no, not at all. In all honesty, I might have dozed off just a little bit. It's kinda early though, see. Even Mr. Jonathan with his seemingly in endless good cheer has a hard time staying awake in the morning. Relatable. <laughs> but anyways, is there a reason you're here so early? Did you need to talk with me about something? Uh, I haven't thought this bit through. <laughs> I thought it was some time, I wanted to spend some time with you, I wanted to report on yesterday's mission. Um, I don't want to be too forward. I, I kind of want to, but at the same time I don't. So I'm just gonna say I thought I was on time. Jonathan frowns and looks at the clock. School doesn't start till 8 o'clock. Oh, haha. Uh, it's not 8 right now? It isn't. I get my alarm is on the wrong time. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that. He looks genuinely upset. I feel a little bad for lying to him. Uh, not that much, honestly. Well, at least you'll be on schedule tomorrow. In the meantime, you're welcome to take a little nap before class. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. I sit down on my desk, Jonathan sits down too and picks up his pen. Well, it looks like I could have sleep. Uh, I could have slept in after all. Wait, is that... Class did again. Wait, did I miss the opportunity to talk with him? Damn it, I... I kinda want to retry that, but I also want to keep just going. God damn it, I should've... Oh, I should've reported yesterday's mission. At least, class yet again. As dull as it should be to hear the same thing again, I find that I've got plenty to keep my mind occupied. I had noticed it the day before, but it's still just as enrapturing to watch Mr. Jonathan teach. The way he just gesticulates with his hands, the way his eyes light up with his passion, he's definitely a standout kind of guy. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little moved by his tenacity. He's got one hell of a what the fuck? bright future in front of him. I just hope that these punks don't break his spirit before then. What was that? I sit up and turn my alarm off before stretching. I never thought I'd see the day where I'd get up so early with no fuss. But I've been doing it without a problem. For the past month? It's already been a month? After a shower, I pack up breakfast and head out to school. Good morning, Dana. Good morning, Mr. Jonathan. You got the goods? Jonathan looks around in mock paranoia. Depends, do you have your end of the bargain? I pull a bento from my backpack and show it to him. Let's do this trade together, no funny business. Jonathan grabs something on his desk and holds it out slowly as I extend the breakfast. At this point, we both can't hold back smiles. One, two, three! We sit your items, and Jonathan laughs. He grabs his shirt collar and leans his mouth towards it, like he's taking, tucking into small microphone. Man, you're gonna stand down. I repeat, stand down. I look at the book in my hands. Oh, Thomas by Dean Koontz. I've heard of 
the author before but not of the book. Is that a real book? Penny from the future. Is that a real book? It probably is, right? Okay, good to know. So this is your recommendation for this week? Jonathan has popped the lid from the container and is looking happily at its contents. It's a series. I'll let you borrow the next one when you finish. We will take a seat and I pull out a matching bento. I've learned that Mr. Jonathan has an aptitude as big as himself, so mine doesn't have as much as his. I doubt that. <laughs> I do, I do have a big appetite. <laughs> Excuse me? It's kinda cold here, but I can't turn on the heater. I have two very small reasons. I'll tell you someday, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Jonathan sighs happily around a mouthful before swallowing. You really spoiling me with breakfast every morning, Dana. I can't even prepare my own breakfast. <laughs> I honestly don't know what I'm giving to him. I usually just eat some yogurt with cereal and that's my breakfast. But sometimes I would get, you know, a little bit spicy and <laughs> do some toast with tea or maybe coffee, whatever I'm in the mood for. What can I say? I really like cooking. I really don't like cooking, but whatever you say, then. Well, that's not entirely true. <laughs> Well, I think we're the same. I only took up the hobby since finding out that what a foodie Jonathan is. I'll be the first to admit that what I put out isn't the most high quality cuisine. But here Jonathan, hum happily as he wolves down what I put in front of him, is an amazing feeling. I guess that makes sense. I tap the book with my finger. So this book, what's it about? Am I gonna get it spoiled? Jonathan covers his mouth politely as he chews and swallows. A young man coming in extraordinary circumstances. Are you talking about certain series called Joyous Bizarre Adventures? Did I stutter <laughs> saying that? I don't know why. What kind of circumstances? Extraordinary ones! Smart ass. Jonathan wins. There is lots of supernatural elements if that sweetens the pot. With a new fun entrance, I look at the cover. You know, it is too well, Mr. Jonathan. Is this an advertising or something? It's the only way I know how to repay you for your delicious food. Our conversation is cut off as the door opens. Who could it be at this hour? Class doesn't start for at least another 40 minutes. Dio! This is wild. What's he even doing here? <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna say I have two puppies in my room. Two little small puppies. Small. They are demons <laughs> dressed up as angels. They're sleeping right now. That's why I'm able to record. And hopefully they will stay like that. Okay, deal what? What are you doing here? Jonathan bolts out from the desk, nearly knocking his chair over. Oh, what do we have here? I don't know why Jonathan reacted so strongly to the man's presence. Was he trouble? I'm guessing. I was just... He gestures to me. We were just... The man comes over to our joint desk and peers at our breakfast. Holy. Eating mediocre food and chatting instead of working. What is he? Is he a teacher? Is he a principal or something? Well, they're asshole. It might be mediocre, but you don't have to say it. Exactly. You tell him, Danny. Dana. Whatever. <laughs> My lesson plan's already done for the day, Dio. The man. Dio. Arts and eyebrow. Hmm. What about the next day's plan? The next week's? And. He reaches over and boobs Jonathan on the nose with a manicure <laughs> nail. It's principal Brando during school hours, you know that. I knew it. I had the vibe. Why is he the principal? Anyone but him. So this guy is the principal. What a snooty bastard. Jonathan rubs the tip of his nose like he's getting rid of a smudge of dirt. Principal Brando. What do I owe the this pleasant surprise of a visit. The atmosphere is... Oh, in here is thick enough to cut with a knife, a very dull knife. I hope my little morning meetings with Jonathan aren't going to get him into trouble. 
I was just stopping by to make sure you received my memo. Oh, um, <laughs> his piercing gaze lands on me, and I straighten up as I'm scrutinized. Okay, what? Do I will just. Oh my god. I'm not joking, but I have some keychains in my wall. And I have a little Enrico Pucci keychain on my wall. And it just started moving out of nowhere. <laughs> okay, Pucci, I know this is here, but calm down. <laughs> I'm trying to see if this if it's my breath or something. Okay, it could be. It could be. It's still weird. <laughs> this person gaze lands on me and I turn out and Okay. I hope you two aren't doing anything inappropriate. Okay. Jordan gasp. Obviously scandalized. Before he can say anything though. Yo cuts him off. Not that I care either way, as long as your job isn't neglected. You can flirt your little hair down. Okay, Dio. Calm down. <laughs> My mouth dropped. Just what is he insinuating? Check your email, Jojo. Here is Jonathan standing in the middle of the room. Slack jar. I don't know what I said there. He blinks and closes his mouth, have lost regards in his cheeks. I'm I'm sorry about that. Principal Brando, he's I shake my head, still in shock. Nothing to be sorry about. I guess I've been kind of impeding on your mornings. You listen to me, then. You are an impeding. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know. At all. Spending my mornings with you has been wonderful. If anything, I've gotten a bit selfish about it. Expecting you to wake up early and come visit me. It's not selfish if you aren't telling me to do it. Besides, I'm doing it because I like spending time with you. The word leave my mouth before I can even think. You're not shocked! I'm shocked! <laughs> wow, I can't believe it. I just came out and said that. I'm pretty sure my cheeks are glowing. <laughs> I don't know why you like spending time with an old man like me. Old? Man, man was like in his 20s. I'm even older than him. <laughs> but I like spending time with you too, Dana. My mouth flapped like a fish out of water as I tried to respond. <laughs> I swallowed hard and decided to bypass the compliment and change the subject somewhat. Old man, you don't seem that old to me. I might not be physically old, but I know my tastes are a bit dated for a 20. Three year old? Oh, so he's 23 here. That's perfect. Like, a week ago, I was 23 too, but now I'm 24. Jonathan? <laughs> I'm still older than him, I guess. Jonathan laughs. I know it can be a bit boring. There's nothing wrong with being boring. I don't think you're boring. We're only five years apart, so I'm 17. No, wait, I'm 18. Man, I lost my ability to do math. There's nothing wrong with being boring, I don't think you're boring. I don't think you're boring. I'm not gonna call you that. Because, man, you are my ray of sunshine. I promise I'm not fishing for sympathy. I know my life revolves around school and my students, but I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't want to be anywhere else in life. I'm happy. We both fall silent. I think it's time for me to change the subject again. So the principal, you guys seem pretty close. For some reason, Jonathan looks a little sad. I never really consider us close. As much as I'd like us to be. But yes, Principal Brand is my brother. Huh, I would have never guessed that. With a <laughs> hoity toity way do you act around Jonathan? I can't imagine them growing up together. Their personalities are so different. I'm sure there was a lot of friction between them in, your, in their youth. But speaking of Dio, I need to check that memo he sent. He takes a seat at his desk and I start cleaning up or breakfast as he clicks his mouse and clicks his keyboard. The desks are back in order and our ventos are packed in my bag when Jonathan gives a gasp. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound like a gasp. What was that? He stands from his desk, breathing from ear to ear. This memo isn't what I was expecting at all. It's clear he's excited and I have to admit I'm starting to get excited too. Well, what's the news? Jonathan bounces on his heels and sucks in his lips as if he's trying to hold back the word thing. What is it? Hmm, 
Should I tell you or make you wait to find out who with the other students? I'm right here, man. Ah, what a tease. He wants to tell me as much as I want to know. Tell me, tell me! Jonathan managed to keep him silent for L, but a second before he lets the secret out, on a gust of breath. Class trip to the beach! Fuck! I don't like to go to the beach. <sighs> Could have been anywhere else. I don't know what I was expecting. And even though it sounds fun, I don't think it's all that surprising, but Jonathan is obviously pumped about it. And I can't help but match his enthusiasm. Oh, wow. Right? He laughs happily. This will be my first class trip with my students. They're gonna be so excited. God, it's precious. Yes. I'm not really one for class trips, and in any other circumstances I wouldn't go. But I'm really looking forward to it. The door opens then and two students walk in, looking groggily and ready for a day of learning. Jonathan and I smile at each other before we fall into our teacher student roles again. Finally! Oh wow, that was fast! <laughs> the train ride had been uneventful. With Jonathan going over general rules and stuff, a student clad in swimwear looked out the window and chatted with each other. I had one seat by Jonathan, but just so can Caesar had gotten to me first. I was a little annoyed at the at the fact, but even still I had fun talking and laughing with them. So I've met Caesar now. I guess it's for the best. What Dio said has been sticking in the back of my mind. I hope you two aren't doing anything inappropriate. I think it's been bothering Jonathan too. We still have our morning meetings, but we both seem more subdued now. Does that mean that what we have been doing before was flirting? It didn't feel like it. Our banter had always felt natural, lighthearted. Herded. What was so wrong with that? Are you dressed up like that on the beach? <laughs> Alright class, if you get in the water, don't go too deep. And make sure you have someone with you. Make sure to stay safe and have fun. There's a few shears and everyone disperses in little groups along the shoreline. I'm left standing with Jonathan. Are you going to swim, Dana? I don't know how to swim. Nah, it's not really my thing. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I look over his outfit, I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of looking forward to seeing Jonathan in some shorts. I was thinking that too, honestly. Having his shirt off was <laughs> me hoping for too much. But shorts seemed like a reasonable expectation, but he's still in his normal, in his normal everyday clothes. I can't believe he's like that with... The heat? Are you going to change? Jonathan looks down at himself and frowns. I had planned on it, but I guess my outfit is a bit stiff for a beach outing. That's what I'm saying, man. Just a little. Jonathan puckers his lips in thought. He grabs his shirt and pulls it from his pants. Better. It's getting there. He opens the top button of his shirt. Calm down, man. I can see your teeth. <laughs> How about now? Now we're talking. We share a laugh and look out to the water as we sober up. So what do you have planned for today? I sling my bag off my shoulder and riffle through my through it briefly. I pull out the book Jonathan had given me earlier that week. I'm gonna continue to unravel the adventures of old Thomas while basking in the sun. Jonathan nods to his bag on the ground. <clears throat> I have the same idea. Sunshine and reading are a great combination, don't you think? Yeah, I have been doing some reading under the sunlight too. We both busy ourselves with setting up our spot. I had brought two beach towels, but Jonathan trumped, <laughs> trumped me and brought two foldable reclining chairs. It seems we both have the intentions of spending the trip together. Oh, I think about you again. Oh no. Jonathan seems to notice my expression grow gloomy. Gloomy. Why did I say that like that? Is everything alright, Dana? I force a sheer smile. Yeah, I was just sunning out for a bit. He hums suspiciously, but doesn't press the mirror. I have to fight the wind a bit, but I get the umbrella open and planted in the sand between our chairs. Perfect. I look down at our little spot and think about this, about his sentiment. This really is perfect. A good book, a good spot, and a good friend. What could be better than this? It makes me feel guilty. There it is again, that face. Huh? He keep pulling out a really sad face. It's nothing really. 
husband looks at me with those kind eyes. It only makes me feel worse. He looks angry though. <laughs> I don't know if you feel the same way, but I like to consider us friends. I consider us friends too. Am I in the friend zone now? Friends tell each other when something is bothering them, right? He is blushing right now. <laughs> Do friends blush when talking like that, Jonathan? Do they? Do they? Do they? I don't know. I'm not saying you have to, but if I don't like seeing you look so sad... What? I'm not saying you have to. But if I don't like seeing you look so sad... So if you need to talk, I'm here to lend an ear. Ah, this situation is such a mess. And all because I overthink things too much. I take a deep breath. Why was it bothering me so much anyways? If there wasn't some thread of truth in it, I'd be able to shrug it off without a problem. But the fact of the matter was, I didn't feel something for Jonathan. I think anyone in their right mind would feel something for him. It's a wonderful guy. It's not a crush. Exactly. <laughs> but I can tell that if we keep going on like we have, it will definitely grow into one. And that could be a real disaster. For my feelings, if he doesn't feel the same way. Or for his career, if he does. It's a real lose-lose situation. Jonathan has been waiting patiently for me to speak. I decided to tell him what's eating at me. It's about the principal, your brother. Oh. Is it what he said the other month? A month? Again? Yeah. Jonathan is silent for a long moment. I haven't made you uncomfortable, have I? No, no, it's nothing like that. <laughs> I should have just kept my mouth shut. This is just too awkward. It's just, I don't want you to get in trouble or have people talking because I'm always bothering you, you know? There's so much wrong with what you just said. <laughs> he puts out his hand and hands them off. What we're doing is not wrong, so I won't get in trouble. If people start talking, we both know it will be completely fictitious. Fictitious? And you must definitely aren't bothering me. Jonathan smiles. He likes to say things to get under my skin, so I'm used to him making remarks along these lines. And then I stop to consider that this that his words might have affected you. I apologize. You don't have to apologize. I guess I was just thinking too much into it. My mind can be rather overactive at times too, so I understand. He gestures to the chair. Shall we? We settle down with our books, I feel a lot better now that we've talked about it. My shoulders definitely feel a lot lighter. <laughs> I read a few pages, the story is in the thick of it, but I'm having a hard time keeping my eyes on the words. I keep wandering over to Jonathan. <laughs> Who would not look at my man? He looks so relaxed and happy and beautiful, but that's beside the point. Jonathan smiles at me. Oh, hey. <laughs> what? Oops. Busted. I look pointedly down at my book. Nothing! You keep on staring. Do I have something on my face? Yes. Beauty. <laughs> no, it's nothing like that. I'm just... I'm really happy. I'm admiring the view. <laughs> Actually, you do have something on your face. I don't want to come up as too direct. I'm just gonna say I'm really happy, because I am. I'm really happy to be back on this game. <laughs> Jonathan takes a big breath in and lets it out with a content hum. I know how you feel. I can't remember ever feeling so at ease. It's a nice feeling. It really is. I'm quiet for a few moments, eternally debating if I should say what's on the tip of my tongue. What the hell, I might as well. Spending time with you always makes me feel at ease. I guess it's just the effect you have on people. <laughs> Jonathan lets out a joyful bubble of la laughter. Ugh. You can't say that it's my effect because I feel the same way about you. <sighs> Damn, I'm sweating. I blame the sun. <laughs> Obviously, it's the sun, right? Yes. Jonathan gives me a smile before going back to his book. I turn back to my own story, and I'm more mindful to keep my eyes to myself. Uh, 
I'm nearly dozy now of when Jonathan stands up and stretches. I should probably check on all my students, make sure they aren't poking at Charles or eating sand. <laughs> how old are they? <laughs> no, honestly, it doesn't matter how old they are, they would do that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like things some of them would do. <laughs> I was right. Jonathan laughs and gives me a wave before heading down the beach. I watch him go, a smile plaster on my face. Who's going to ruin that? God, he makes me happy. I lean back in my chair and read a bit more. I've read about 10 pages and Jonathan has a return. I cover my brow with my hand and squint as I look around the along the shoreline. It doesn't take long to spot Jonathan's large flame. He's quite a ways down to the beach with Joseph and Caesar. There is a net between the boys and him. And as I watch, Joseph spikes a volleyball over it. Jonathan is damn near a blur as he ducks to bob it in the air with a quick save. Caesar is quick to return it just as fast. The three of them are insane to watch. The energy is non-stop and the hits are relentless. Am I going to hit hit? Joseph takes a killer dive that kicks up a blast of sand. Ouch. I close my book. With them going at it like Olympians, I know I won't be getting any reading done. As the exchange continues, a few students gather around and cheer for different sides. I stay in my chair but can't help but give a little fist bump every time Jonathan scores. Damn it, I thought I was going to see it. I thought I was going to see them. The game goes on for a while, with both sides covered in sand and breathing heavily. Jonathan's score side has the most cheering fans, and his score is bloated well beyond Joseph and Caesar's. I can't hear the exact words. That are being said, but Joseph's spirit, spirited tone floated to me on the ocean breeze. Watching their body language, I can see that the game is being called, but Joseph doesn't want to quit <laughs> until his team pulls ahead. Give it up, buddy. Jonathan is a powerhouse that won't be taken down that easily. Jonathan raises his voice and says something to the students, but I still can't hear it. Judging by the responding slumped shoulders and the way the crowd dissipates along the beach to pick up belongings, I'd say that it was a time to go home and not sleep. Wait up! Need more water. Okay, I'm out of water now. Uh, time to go home announcement. I get up from my chair and start packing our things away. I'm nearly done when Jonathan makes his way over. <coughs> oh, thank you for getting everything together, Dana. No problem. I pull out a bottle of water and toss it to him. That was an impressive game. Jonathan twists the cup off and nearly downs the hole bottle in a few deep gulps. He wipes his mouth and smiles. You were watching? It was hard not to. You totally kicked their butts. Yeah, I kind of did, didn't I? <laughs> Gosh, I'm going to be sore tomorrow though. I haven't moved like that since my rocky taste in college. Man, you're ripped! <laughs> How do you keep that going? <laughs> Jonathan used to play rugby. With a body like that, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Make sure to take a nice hot bath tonight to keep your muscles loose. Mm, that sounds nice right now. But speaking of going home, he lifts his bag into his shoulder. Time to wrangle up the rascals and catch the train. I follow suit and pick up my things. As much as I love the beach, I really don't. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to tracking all this sand into my house. Yeah, I hate sand. I'm about to turn and head back to the road, but Jonathan stops me with a gentle touch on my shoulder. Then, the casual yet timid touch makes my heart sputter. <laughs> that might hurt. Thank you for joining our class. I had a lot of fun with you today. I had a lot of fun too. He takes off down the beach to collect his class. My throat feels tight and my hands are sweating like crazy. I don't know why, but Jonathan makes me feel nervous in the best way. I wonder why. <laughs> July. I hadn't realized that those were those things were like the months. <laughs> Ports aren't my thing at all. It's loud and cramped on the bleachers, and as I weave around people in search of Jonathan or team scores, everyone jumps to their feet at once, nearly giving me a heart attack. I stand still among the cheering students and parents, waiting for the fervor to die down. Okay, the coast is clear. I start 
We're doing through again. Careful not to step on any toes. There he is! Wow. He's really into this. Even though everyone else has taken a seat, he's still standing at the railing, shooting his heart out. My man. I can't help but smile as I watch him. He really does love this school, doesn't he? Hey, get out of the way, sports lover. <laughs> it's quite long, not taking my eyes off of Jonathan. When I'm a few feet away, he sees me and waves me over. Damn it, you made it! He looks cute! I'll be honest, I heavily debated whether to show up or not. If it was anyone other than Jonathan who had asked, me, asked for me to come, I would have flatly refused. Same. I wouldn't have missed it for the world! <laughs> you said this was the last game of the season, right? Right. We didn't make it to any of the big leagues games, but we've still had a hell of a <laughs> season. What, Jonathan, the pra prim and proper teacher? Just dropped the H word. <laughs> He's really cutting loose tonight. <laughs> so, uh, are we winning? <laughs> Not really. Not exactly. But the boys are really giving it all they've got. And that's what's important. I turn my attention to the field, just in time to see one of the football players trip over their own cleats. Two of his nearby fellow players grab him by his jersey and hoist him up. Well, they might not be the most coordinated, but they do seem to have good camaraderie. Some things are more important than winning, honestly. We both turn our attention towards the field as the players on both sides light up. There's a brief moment of peace before both sides begin running around like maniacs. The ball zooms from hand to hand in a flurry of motion that I can hardly keep up with. I don't know what's going on, but the fact that the ball is with the other team probably isn't good. Suddenly one of our guys rushes forward. He's on the tail of the enemy. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> our guy stumbles a bit, but only falters for a second before picking up his pace. I recognize the jersey number. It's the player who tripped in this on sideline just a minute before the match started or the set started, whatever a football thing was called. The point is, I'm rooting for the guy. Come on, you can do it! Yeah, you can do it! We both start yelling the encouragement together as loud as we can. You can do it! You can do it! He's bumping his legs like crazy, but there's still about two feet between them. Just then, he dives at the enemy and grabs him in a big bear hug. Their legs tangle together and they both double to the ground. Yes, great job! Are we going around us sheer so loud that it feels like I'm going to, I'm gonna go deep. I hardly notice though, because I'm jelly too. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Oh my god, Jonathan! <laughs> Language! I don't really understand football, American football. No, I don't. <laughs> but I know we didn't make a touchdown. But we're all just happy because the other team didn't make one either. <laughs> it's the little victories, I suppose. After all the shouting, my mouth's pretty dry. It's not a pressing matter, but the shooting and all the movements is starting to stress me out. I need a little reprieve from all the noise. I touch Jonathan on the shoulder I, and have to raise my voice to be heard over the ruckus. I'm going to get a drink! Do you want anything? What? I'm going to get a drink! Want anything? Okay, I'll pull you in if anything happens. What? You have some waves. I'm good! I went back before the wind, my way out of the bleachers. Jeez, the line to the concession stand is insane. I take my place at the back of the line and try to turn out all the chaos, but it's not easy. The people in front and behind me are rowdy and loud. I bear with it for a while, but, the, but when the line hasn't moved and I've been bumped into for the opt-in time, I decide to just take a walk. This is so much better. I can still hear the distant clash of helmets and the roar of the crowd, but now it's distant, like in a dream. I hope Jonathan isn't worrying about my absence. He's probably too caught up in the game to notice. I take a seat at the, uh, on the edge of the fountain and close my eyes. I wouldn't be so close to the fountain, though. With my eyes closed! Ah, bless silence. Well, same silence. Are you here for the football game? Who is it? Oh shit! <laughs> But that's exactly what I was going to say. Oh, uh, yeah, I am. Well, I'm sorry to inform you that you're in the wrong place. He points in the direction of the football field. It's that way. It's obvious that he's being patronizing, but it makes my cheeks burn and my fists 
coins. Thank you, Yarks and Eyebrow. Sir. He smiles and I notice how his teeth gleam in the low light, giving him a particularly sinister air. Wait, I recognize you. You're the student that's been glued to Jojo's side for the past few months. I'm not sure how to respond to that, so I don't. You seem more than happy to take for the both of us. He seems particularly taken with you. He's always had a women heart, so I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised. What are you trying to say? He steps closer, his screen spreading. No, no, there is no need for such a hostile tone. We're just having a conversation. I become painfully aware that I'm all along with this guy. The distant sounds of the game suddenly seem so far away. You were sent here after a little incident at your old school. I've read your file. There's so many students at Unico, so it strikes me as odd that he would take the time to remember why I came here. Or maybe he's bluffing. I don't really want to find out if that if the latter is true. A problem child, not unlike the other students here. So what exactly has Jojo found in you? Another step closer. He's now towering over me, his weak smile still in place. He lifts his hand, and for a second I think that he's going to strike me instead. A long nail presses under my chin, earning my head upwards. I knew, I knew it. I suppose your face isn't all that bad. Ha! Huh. <laughs> well, yours is. Calm down, Pochi. He bends at the waist, bringing her face close. Oh, really close. Oh. I want to run, but it feels like I've been frozen to the spot. Is Jonathan going to come? Uh, there's something about his eyes, honey gold and piercing, that make my body want to relax into the precise touch of his hand under my chin. I suppose the only way to find out how you've ensnared Jojo is to get a tip for myself. Bro! Whoa! This escalated quickly! When his eyes closed, the spell isn't broken. In fact, it's as if it's strengthened. I know what's coming next, but I don't fight it. I close. What? He's... What? My heart feels so heavy, but my mind is like static, a white buzz of nothingness. We're just going to skip that. Today is the last day of school, my last day at Unico. It feels like the biggest relief in the world. <clears throat> what just happened? Ever since that night, my school experience has been nothing short of a nightmare. That one moment of impaired judgement, that one little kiss, someone had seen it, and that someone had promptly let the entire student body know, oh shit, it had made me nothing short of paria? Paria. And of course the faculty had found out. Officially it was regarded as just a rumor and was eventually swept under the rug. It definitely didn't stop people from talking though. And Jonathan, well, things just weren't the same. He was still shitty during his lessons, but ever since that day I could tell he was faking that happiness. I didn't visit him in the mornings anymore and he didn't talk to me outside of the crowded classroom. Why? Why did... Was it, was it because of my choices when I was with Jonathan? Because I haven't had that sh some choices in a while. I could have explained the situation to him. He was a good guy and I'm sure he would have listened, but I didn't. What was I supposed to say? The truth! I guess it didn't matter anymore. With my diploma in hand, I turned back to look at the school one time. I can't believe how much I messed things up. I stand there for a long while. I think a part of me is hoping I'll run into Jonathan. Not that I know what to do if that happens. I sighed and turned towards home. Don't tell me this! <laughs> Why?! <laughs> you thought that you would kiss a Jojo, but it was me and you! <laughs> no! I refuse!
I am very sad now. What do you mean I didn't get to kiss Jonathan? I am angry, I am sad, I am not happy. This isn't what I had in mind when I will come back to this game. God damn it. I uh, I really thought I had it. What was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to say? God damn it. I seriously can't believe I just kissed Theo. Uh, why, why didn't I have a choice there? God damn it. You know what? <laughs> Jonathan, why didn't you give me a choice? Tell me if I should keep going, if I should reload and just do... Uh, try to do the Jonathan route again Because I can't believe I just got Dio And I didn't even get to the C Caesar I didn't even meet anyone else This isn't fair Fuck off <sighs> I am angry And I'm out of here Goodbye everybody I'm not even joking, I really am angry. <laughs>